Um, my name is Michelle Brownlee. I work in collections management at the Field Museum, and I work in the Collections Resource Center, which is our collection storage space, which is located in the basement of the Field Museum. Um, an interesting thing about the collections at the Field Museum is that we display such a small percentage of the items that we actually have. And at the moment, uh, we're currently in the process of uh, re redoing the Native North American Hall. So it should open very soon. However, um, right now we don't have a Native American exhibit but we are going to be starting installation very soon. Um, we have about 770,000 items in our Native American collections storage spaces. And a vast majority of that is our archeological storage, which is um, consists of <laughs> quite a few pieces of broken, broken pottery, which makes it such a big number, but it is vast collection. Um, and it is very interesting to be able to work with these items. For a long time, the, the goal of the Field Museum was to just collect and collect and collect and bring in um, all these items and without any really any care for the descendant communities or the communities that these items belong to. And so what I think is very, very uh, important is the, the step towards reconnecting people with the items that belong to them and belong to their communities. We have been able to connect a lot of um, material that has been uh, collected on digs and um, back to the communities that they belong to. And oftentimes there are several different descendant communities, which is um, makes things a little bit more complex, but still very important. The, the community collaborative and community access uh, goal is I think the absolute most important um, most important thing that we do in collections management just after you know making sure that the collection is cared for when uh, people of cultural authority visit the, the field museum and visit us in the collections we are able to ask them how best to care for a lot of the items that belong to them like uh, what is appropriate to be on public view, what is what should be sort of tucked away and not be shown to just any general visitors to the collection, what needs to have a little bit more care and sensitivity. That has been like the most rewarding part of my job, I would say, uh, being able to bring folks into our collections and then learn from them and ask them how best I can take care of their items. NAGPRA is a law that was passed in the 1990s that sort of provides more authority to the descendant communities over the items, especially items that are very important, could be sacred or uh, uh, owned by not just one person, owned by the entire tribe, to be able to be given back to the communities that they, ha they had originally belonged to. I just like to keep in mind that these weren't always that these items weren't always in the care of the field museum and they might not always be in the care of the field museum so while they're here at the museum i try my best to to take care of them and so if they do end up going elsewhere that they are still in the best possible condition it's not always easy we have a very large collection but it is um it's how i try to approach my job so we're currently working on renovating the Native American Hall at the Field Museum, which will open very soon. And one of the largest aspects of that hall is the collaborative storytelling. The exhibits are told in sort of a first person point of view from members of the community who have come in and chosen the item specifically for display. And because it is a smaller hall and there is no possible way to tell the story of all of Native America and Native North America. It has all these different rotating aspects that will uh, go from story to story over time. So a story that you see this year, uh, if you come back next year, it'll be swapped out for something different. Um, one of the stories that I am most excited about and I've been working very closely on is the Chaco story. And it's um, the emphasis for that story is land, uh, 
land preservation and um, conservation. So protecting the Chaco site uh, from the fracking that is happening very closely and uh, just sort of preserving the, the space of, of these super, super amazing historic uh, buildings and just the, the history of the Chaco site is so, so incredibly interesting. And it's, um, I'm really excited to have that story highlighted in the exhibit. Um, we even recreated a T-shaped doorway that is very um, indicative of the Chaco site so that you can walk in and just sort of immerse yourself in the, the Chaco story, which I'm very, very excited about. And the Chaco story was co-curated by uh, several members of our Native American Advisory Committee who have been helping us with this project for the last four years. and. Um, it's one of the stories that I'm just really excited to share with everyone.